Yo, I'm gonna show you how I made my Korok armor. I designed and made this myself, so you're more than welcome to cosplay it, but please tag me. Like all my other costumes, I put a lot of time and effort into their designs, so tagging is just really, really awesome and wonderful of you to do. Plus, I get to then see the thing that you created. <laughs> this year I want to do some... This year, I wanted to do something fun and relaxed for Anime Expo. Since a full stam bar couldn't drag me out of Tears of the Kingdom currently, I thought, Koroks! If you don't play Tears of the Kingdom, what are you doing with your life? Well, you probably actually have a life, that's probably what's happening. Koroks are these little guys. You run all over Hyrule looking for these little dudes. They will give you a little seed and then you take them back to the broccolini man Hetsu and he can expand your bag. They're very important and integral to the game and very very adorable. Also very fun to torture we have found in this newest iteration of the Zelda games. There, there are some real gamers out there in the Zelda fan base. <laughs> And there have been some insane war crimes committed against these wee little guys. These wee will, wee will babies. So I thought, armored Koroks. I'm thinking armored e-girl Koroks, renaissance bear Koroks. Just Koroks in general that have a little bit more bite to fight back for all the atrocities that I, they have faced. I wanted this to be really relaxed, so I let people just kind of do whatever designs they wanted to do for the Korok group, which meant more people could join and it could just be a really relaxed, fun vibe. No stress or pressure to make anything super hardcore. If you wanted to go hard Korok, you can go go hard Korok. If you wanted to go chill Korok, you can go chill Korok. That was the beauty of this group, is that everybody just did their own skill levels and it was really wonderful. Make sure you stay after the video. Make sure you stay after the video because I will be showcasing all my friends who are a part of the group and you can go follow some really cool people. I am trying a new format today for my video. Please hype me up. It's taken forever to do. All right, now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. When I was first designing this set, I wanted it to match the Forest Dwellers set that you could already get in the game. The weapons and the shields are so aesthetically I used a lot of these kind of swirlies and little shapes and things throughout the entire armor set to make sure it would look all cohesive and it would match the Forest Dweller vibe. I started with a bra that I was completely in love with on the fit and patterned out some foam pieces to get it started. Use painter's tape so it's easy to pull off and don't forget your registry marks. Copy over your foam and glue it all together. Once it's all attached, you can just glue that straight onto the bra. It will take a little bit, so just go slow section by section. You can trust me, this is a good alternative for a breastplate. Next, I wanted to add some lower parts to the breastplate to make it look more platey and less breasty. You know what I mean. Line your titties up on some foam, sketch it out, and then cut it out and glue it on. Yeah. Now it's time for details. Since the Forest Dwellers set is all wooden, I wanted to go the soldered iron wooden textured route. Get your butt into a well-ventilated area and start soldering away. Making EVA foam look like wood is so easy. All you have to do is a bunch of swirlies and knots all over your foam and then just solder it in. It's easy. Or you could take a blade and then just heat the foam after if you're not too down with soldering. Depending on the thickness of your foam, make sure not to stab too deep or you will catch on fire. Now it's time for more details. Take your painter's tape out and cover your whole wooden boob, and then you're gonna just, just draw and design some swirlies that you can then peel off, copy over onto foam, cut out, and then add more details to. I use pins to pin stuff onto my breastplates before I wanna commit, but remember to take the pins out, okay? Just... <laughs> Okay. Once you're happy with your pattern, transfer it over to EVA, add some details, and then glue it all together with contact cement. That way you get that real flush connection. Paint! Since we are just painting it to look like wood, just dry brush a bunch of light colors over top of your dark spray paint, and then drop some dark paint into the cracks and crevices. This just looks like a chocolate Easter egg. You can't go wrong with wood painting, so just as long as you're alternating between dry brushing and then dark, dark shadows and highlights and stuff, you'll be fine. For all the little details, I went in with this green and I did a gradient green and I just fell in fucking love with it because it looks like it's glowing. I realized after the fact that I wanted to add more details to the breastplate, so I ended up making a shape similar to the Forest Dweller's spear and plopping that on the bottom part of the breastplate. I then glued on the glorious gold turd made by Habiteer Workshop. Because how's it gonna be a Korok cosplay if you don't put a little poops all over it? Shoulder pads! Epaulette! Protezione pers- Look, I'm trying really hard. Shoulder post! <laughs> 
Since we were going with the Korok vibe, I thought it would be cool to take one of the shapes, the little dude's faces, this little star, and turn it into a shoulder pad. It lends itself well with the nice point and the little side points as well. I patterned out the little tree star, folded it over my shoulder. I cut some little pieces from the center so that it would, when I glued it together, curve more to my shoulder and get more of that fantasy shoulder flippy leaf vibe. I also made some under plates for the shoulder pad that I soldered the wood grain thing into to kind of bring that in with the bracers and the legs. Just like with the bracers and the legs, I added swirlies, put it all together, boop, 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 and then it was ready for paint. To attach the shoulders, I did a combo of Velcro and straps. Because these shoulders were so light, I could get away with a very tiny attachment point for my breastplates. Breast, breast. I also had a strap that was secured across the back, attaching both shoulders to keep them in place. For some final security, some underarm straps are attached with Velcro. Just oh, no, wait, she's just vibing. Never mind. Oh, girl, that shirt. Because I straight up built this onto a bra, the attachments are already built in and ready to go. No D-rings or buckles needed. I just added some straps to cover the bra straps and then added some Velcro to those for the shoulder pads. Good lord, ignore those massive cum globulars. <laughs> just plop these shoulders on and give them the ride of their lives to make sure everything will stay put. Wow, wow, wow. You've made some awesome shoulder pads and a great breastplate. <laughs> Yeah. Now we need arms and legs. I wanted to go all in on my armor, so I did decide to do some very forest dweller-esque bracers. I did the spear shape that I did on the breastplate on top of two pieces of wood. I cut out the pieces in foam, soldered it, glued together, added some extra details, and then painted. I feel like I really nailed the balance between simplicity and design because sometimes I do have a too much jean and that can just make it look really cluttered, but I did have to add a little turd at the top as well because, you know, this little poopy for good measure. Legs. Since the legs are a little bit more long, I did the forest dweller's sword for the little front detail. Did the two pieces of foam, soldered in the wood details, added a ton of extra details because there's just more leg space. There's just more space, leg. There's just more space on your leg for details. So I went a little bit more ham on that. Then it was time to paint. Also, you cannot tell me that this does not look like Easter chocolate. I grew up in New Zealand. Easter chocolate is like a staple my whole childhood where you would like wake up and at the end of your bed, there'd be like a little basket of crap. And then you'd go to the warehouse the day after Easter and it would all be discounted and your mom would buy all the old chocolate and you'd just gorge yourself on chocolate for weeks after Easter. I did all the dry brushing for the wood and then the glowing green for the little details. Also, a quick reminder, I did all this in a week in and in a bit. So if it looks like crap, that's why. <laughs> and of course, I uh, pissed a third on top. Je suis désolé. These bracers were really easy for attachments. I just added some straps with some Velcro. I think I might make a creepy moss pole person to wear this armor and just set it up in my garden. That sounds really good. Look at me, I'm like a little Wonder Woman Korok. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. And of course, the iconic turds. Yeah. For the leg attachments, I did the straps with Velcro method and then had a wee tie at the ankle since that area is a lot more flexy. So I didn't want to have to stress about it popping because leg armor pops a lot. I am so obsessed with these. They look so cute. Look at that. I'm proud of myself. I made these little arm cuffs to separate the shoulders from the bracers and I just, oh, I loved how they turned out, man. I always put a little arm cuff in my armor because I feel like it looks pretty good. With the bracers, it just, and my nails. Yeah. Oh, oh girl, where are you going? Okay, we all know your double jaw. Okay. Yep. All right, bye. The shield was pretty easy for me to brainualize because I realized I just wanted a larger version of the forest dwellers shield, but with a, just a little bit more of a twist. You know those stumps that you stand on to activate different Korok puzzles? I wanted that to be the design on the front of the shield. Making your shield, you want to choose a nice thick foam. It's going to be a nice light prop, so it's, it's all good. Shields are like probably one of the lightest things that you can make because it's usually just one piece. Yeah! Or one plus a couple other pieces stacked on. So take a nice thick <laughs> foam. Jessica, stop. Don't slap my foam. Cut like a little curve so you can glue it together so it has a nice curve. Curve. When you're done, add some big thick chunks for details and then you're good to go. Anytime you want a very specific pattern on something, take painter's tape, plop it on top of your foam, sketch out your pattern and then just peel it off. Painter's tape is always really easy to remove and it's really great to work with. To give the leaf veins a little bit more dimension, I put a thin piece of EVA foam down the center and veined, veined off to the sides before I covered it with two millimeter EVA foam and really squanched it down on the edges to make sure that that vein would pop up and give it more dimension. Also, I purchased like 13 of those little rompers. So this is Lore Masters. This is my new Jessica uniform. <laughs> I really love this detail on the shield because it is a subtle nod to those who pay attention to the Koroks and their, their games and their puzzles. So it's more of a, if you know, you know. Also, I ended up painting like the wood on here. Look at, look at the cuties. Look. Here's my shield. Ah! 
I'm so proud of how this turned out. It looks so damn cute. I made this really fast, but for my speed, I am so stoked with how it came out. To hold it, I gave it this handle and added this elastic strap. It's really easy to hold onto during the day, and the elastic gives you space for the bracers to easily throw... <laughs> easily slide through. I did finish up the back of the shield somewhat so that if you did get a glimpse of it, it wouldn't look like shit. It looks somewhat put together. Even though it is so large, because it's made with foam, it's super light and easy to pose with. <laughs> Be proud of me telling me I'm good. Spear! Our core group decided we wanted weapons from the Forest Dwellers set, so a bunch of us 3D printed swords, bows, shields, and even spears. I went the spear route. This gorgeous model was done by illustrious models, and then the Habiteer Workshop printed it for me. All I had to do was finish it up, paint it, and add a whole bunch of little details and stuff. 3D printers are gods. Make the robots work for you. I used a thick dowel to put all the pieces of the spear together and added some little red accents to it to act as kind of like... Like the little berries that little guys hold on to sometimes. I wrapped the handles with some scrap fabrics that I used throughout the costume to make everything match. Because both of these props were fairly lightweight, I had such an easy time posing with these, which was super important when wearing a huge armor set. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to ask, what is your favorite gear set in... Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Tell me right now. A keys for you. I was so stoked with how both of these came out because they like they look cartoony. They look like they're straight out of the game. And they're lightweight and I'm able to do tricks! Look at me! <laughs> I look like a little Korok Spartan. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> you see, old friend, I brought more soldiers than you did. Now we move on to skirts and belts and all those little dangly bits. When researching Koroks and other people's Korok cosplays, I came across silk stitches and they made this adorable little acorn bag. I'm just gonna show you my finished version because if you wanna get the full go over to silk stitches and check out their stuff. This right here is my favorite thing ever. I have cute aggression for this bag. How can you have cute aggression for a bag? <laughs> if you wanna go learn how to make it, please go check out their socials. I ain't gonna show you, you're gonna figure it out from them. For the lower half of the costume, I knew I wanted pants so that I could have comfort and agility on the day of Anime Expo, and I knew I wanted some sort of grass skirt. So I made a leaf skirt. First, I took some scrap paper and sketched out some shapes that were similar to other Korox masks because I wanted to ultimately incorporate it all throughout the costume in subtle ways. So if you're really looking, you're like, hey, that's pretty cool. Also, Koroks are like little butt plugs with leaves taped to their face, so there's not a lot you can do to kind of like show that it's a thing. So you have a lot of creative with Koroks. That's why I like to choose really obscure little things, because like this could be an e-girl with the right imagination. <laughs> so I gradient dyed some green fabric so that I could have a good base, and then dyed some sparkly green stuff for the veins. I used heat and bond to stick the sparkly stuff to some darker fabric, and then heat and bond again to take to take that vein combination and then stick it to the light green. And then I just airbrushed it all to make it look a little bit more cartoony, a little bit more poppy. Yeah. I used the same technique for my Kindred cosplay way back in the day. I repeated this process three times and good lord the result. I, I was obsessed. I was in love. It looks perfect. It looks like a perfectly cartoony, kind of like that movie Epic where it's like the fabric is meant to look like leaves. It's not, you don't know if it's leaves, but it's like, uh. <laughs> Oh, sorry, little dude. The skirt definitely did need a little bit more texture to it instead of just the three leaves. So I added some dark torn, torn up. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to the belt. This was simple enough. It's just a very long, thin piece of EVA with soldered pieces of wood all around, some little details on the top and bottom, and then some extra swirlies that I had left over from the previous builds put onto the thing. I also made a little leaf cover. If I ever wanna wear this without pants, I have a coochie cover, which is great. Uh, I just put little extra details of pupes on there and just hot glued it straight to the belt. Here's the belt all completed. It all got smushed to the storage bin, so ignore that, but I added these adorable glowing acorns that were printed for me by Habitier Workshop. I used a battery powered string LEDs, which I drilled a hole into the top and then wrapped some cord around the wire to hide it. I added the strip of Velcro all along the top. I also added to the top of the skirt. Even though you technically won't ever see the inside of the skirt because I was wearing it, I did add some little mini airbrush veins to the inside. Just wrap it around and then plop the belt on top. You can add some snaps or buckles to the skirt to make sure it stays secure when you attach it. Ear horns, branch ears, whatever whatever these things are. We all decided in the group that they looked like little horns. So you just you give that to a cosplayer, they're just gonna run with it. So I made these little horns out of pink insulation foam. I stacked up a couple pieces of foam, cut it out, 
carved it out forever. Please be so careful with this method as you are carving away from yourself. Also, please wear a respirator. Pink insulation foam is terrible for you. Cut away when you're carving because, oh my gosh, the amount of times I've bled over this stuff is, it's sacrificial. I bleed my own blood on the regular when I hit that pink shit. So just be so careful. Sanded it and then covered it in about a thousand coats of wood glue. I then painted it and added some extra little green details. Here is the finished hood ears and mask. The mask is tied to the top of the hood so I didn't have to worry about it sliding off my face. The horns I just glued straight onto the hood. I added this extra detail around the base so you could hide so I could hide the glue once I added it. But bro, it's so damn ugly underneath, but I'm showing you anyway. As you can see, there's some wire there that I fed up through the horns and then connected together. It's ugly and sloppy, but it does the job. To put it on, I took the strap of the mask and put it around my head to secure it, which also helped keep the hood on my head. I added these straps and just tied them around my arm, around underneath my armpits to keep everything in place. I've, I fully lined and trimmed the hood and even added some wire so I, it wouldn't lose its shape. Mate, this is so cute. I should just make a little Korok wave girl version of this. Look at it! I knew I wanted a cape, so I cut this scrap piece of green and airbrushed some gentle weed leaf veins on it. Nah, it's honestly because I rushed everything and I needed to hide all of my zoomed crafting. No one will know if they can't see. Ooh, let me show you with the hood really quick. It looks so good. Tie those straps around the back. Yep, yep. Okay, looks good, laddie. Yes, this is why we need the cape, because it was too lazy to finish up the back, but there you can see it. Is it? It is indeed a bra. But you only need to look at me from the front. Ah. Beautiful, amazing, wonderful. So easy to put on. Taking it off, however, <laughs> it's another story. You did it. You finished the video. Let me know what you thought of that new format. If that was something that you enjoyed. If you want to make a Korok group, freaking do it. There's so many ways to make a Korok. There's just infinite possibilities and design choices that you can make. And it's creatively a very fun time. Koroks are so easy to cosplay. They look like little starfish with leaves slapped to their nasal cavities. So you can't go wrong. You can literally do anything. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay after because I will show all of my friends in their car, the Korok cosplay that they made. So please stay, look at them, watch them, enjoy them. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought.